In this video I will talk about my favorite mixed methods design which is the exploratory sequential design. If you haven't watched my previous videos in which I cover mixed methods in general as well as some other mixed methods designs, feel free to explore this whole playlist. As I said, the exploratory sequential design is my favorite mixed methods design and this is most likely because it's predominantly based on qualitative research, on qualitative data collection and data analysis methods. So basically this design involves uh, collecting and analyzing qualitative data and then using it to build a quantitative tool in order to generalize the findings or at least to check their transferability. So whether they can be transferred to another and uh, usually broader population. There are two main reasons why you may want to consider choosing this design for your study. The first reason is, as I said, if you have conducted your qualitative study and you would like to investigate uh, how generalizable or how transferable these results are. So you would like to see whether uh, a broader population, a broader sample of people will feel the same way or the similar way to what your initial sample felt. And the second reason, it links to the first reason as well, is if you are investigating an under-researched phenomenon, so you don't really have uh, variables to include in your quantitative tool. So simply speaking, you don't know how to measure what you want to measure with your quantitative tool. So to give you an example, when I investigated uh, the idea of Polish migrants' English language identity, which was their relationship between the English language and their sense of self, uh, this was an under-researched phenomenon. So even if I wanted to investigate this generalizability, I wouldn't know how to construct the questionnaire because I just didn't know what this English language identity involves. So how would I know which uh, variables to apply to the questionnaire, which questions to include in the questionnaire if I didn't really know what this English language identity was all about. And for this reason I conducted an in-depth qualitative study uh, which consisted of in-depth uh, interviews and reflective journals and based on the analysis of this data set I developed an understanding of what English language identity is and after that I constructed a questionnaire in order to investigate whether more people felt the same way as the initial qualitative sample. And this, I believe, is the main strength of this approach. It really helps you strengthen your argument and address the criticism uh, aimed uh, towards qualitative research, which states that qualitative research uh, focuses on small samples, on specific cases, but cannot really contribute to this wider understanding, broader understanding of a given phenomenon. So, you can't really generalize, you cannot know whether more people felt the same way or expressed similar ideas or attitudes. And here if you apply this uh, design, you can in fact investigate this issue. You can see whether what you found in your qualitative research can be applied to a broader population. Also by exploring these different elements of the phenomenon you are investigating, so the variables that you are later using to construct this quantitative tool, you are really contributing to the field. So you are designing this new tool for measuring, for example, as in my case, English language identity. In terms of research procedures, in the first step you start with your qualitative study. So for example, this could be your interviews or any other method for collecting qualitative data. Uh, then after you have analyzed this data set, based on this analysis, you are uh, coming up with variables or items to include in the questionnaire. So as I said, uh, by now you understand uh, what the construct that you are investigating uh, consists of. So how to measure it. So you have this idea of questions that you need to ask in order to measure it. In the following stage you are of course conducting your quantitative study and then analyzing the data. And finally again you are bringing all these elements together and you're looking at the phenomena that you investigated and comparing whether the quantitative study or the quantitative phase produced similar results to the qualitative phase. The challenges of this approach are, as in other mixed methods research, the fact that you need to be quite competent in both qualitative and quantitative research, as well as the fact that it's, it can be quite time-consuming because 
you can't start the quantitative phase until you have finished the qualitative phase. Finally, this design quite often is emergent, which means that you don't plan it in advance. So when you start your study, for example, you may be only planning to conduct an in-depth qualitative study of a given phenomenon, but you don't really have this plan to follow this up with the quantitative phase. And this is in fact what happened in my study. I only planned to conduct a detailed qualitative study, but then as I uh, analyzed and described my results, I felt like I want to demonstrate that it actually applies to more people than just my initial sample, which is a great thing, but the challenge here is that uh, firstly, if you're preparing a research proposal or PhD proposal, of course, you cannot be sure about any details of the second phase or even uh, quite often you don't even know that, that the second phase will happen. And secondly, because you haven't planned the second uh, quantitative stage of your study and you didn't take this into consideration when you are developing your whole research plan, of course your time may be limited because all of a sudden you need uh, an extra couple of months at least to develop, conduct and analyze this quantitative study. However, I do believe that the advantages of this design outweigh the possible challenges and for this reason, as I said, I really like to apply this design in my studies. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there is anything I haven't covered or if you have any additional questions, feel free to ask these questions in the comments and I will respond to all of them. Also, if you enjoy this content, like the video and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing.